AM 650 presents You and the Law, a comprehensive look at everything you need to know about the law. Now, here's Sterling Fox. Hello and welcome to this edition of You and the Law. And I am joined in studio today by Joe Murphy and Scott Stanley from the law firm Murphy Batista LLP. Joe and Scott, welcome back. Great to see you both. Good morning, Sterling. Good morning. Uh, The subject for our conversation on today's program is insurance claims. But first and foremost, uh, we'll take a step back a little bit. And uh, Joe, why don't you lead off and tell us a little bit about yourself. You are the Murphy in Murphy Batista. Tell us about yourself and your firm, please. Uh, Sterling, I'm, I'm going to go way back. I grew up in, on the prairies. I have seven brothers and sisters. It was the typical prairie Catholic family. Uh, my father was a radiologist. My mother, before she started having all these children, was a nursing instructor. So I grew up in a, in a home where I heard medical stories mm. almost every night. Sure. Um, when I got out of high school. I came to Vancouver to go to UBC. I have a commerce degree from UBC. And then I went into law school at UBC. And I was fortunate that I got a job, a part-time job working as an insurance adjuster for a private company. And this was in 1972, just when ICBC was coming in. And this was a private company whose adjusting staff all left to go to work at ICBC. Oh, okay. So I worked five hours a day do, adjusting small claims. It was Safeco was the company. Okay. And I learned a little bit about the business. I, I was the only adjuster for in Safeco that hadn't gone through their training program and didn't have short hair, and, but I still had to wear the white shirts they mandated. Okay. So when I got out of law this school... Is, this is Safeco, the same company that uh, owns uh, or uh, advertises Safeco Field for the Mariners oh, down the road. same company. Big Seattle outfit then, Joe. Very yeah. big, very big outfit. Interesting. So when I got out of law school, I had the knowledge as an insurance adjuster. I had absorbed a, a little bit of medical knowledge from my father and my mother and uh, went to work for a small firm article and started doing personal injury claims. Um, I had thought after doing work for an insurance company that I might find an insurance company that wanted me as a lawyer to act for them, but that never happened. The firm I was with did did what's called plaintiff's work. So I started out and uh, even as a student was probably spending half my time doing that kind of work and uh, I then became a lawyer and over the next few years my personal injury practice just grew and grew and grew and in the end of 1981 i left that firm with joe batista he was also at that firm oh i see okay and we set up murphy batista we opened january of uh 1982 the interest rates were about 19 percent Oh, brother were they ever? And i remember it wasn't looked at, at as a good time to start up any new business but we set it up it was joe batista and i we had two secretaries we rented uh, two offices in, a, in another law office. We had two secretarial bays, and we just sort of went from there. We um, operated on the philosophy that rather than advertising, we would do a really good job for our clients, right. and that would bring the work in. Our philosophy was not to grow because we wanted to be able to control the quality of what we did, and we weren't interested in huge quantity. Well. The result today is uh, the firm has 13 lawyers. We have a support staff of about 40. Mm -hmm. And it's all we've grown in order to serve our clients. So that's uh, so that's the expansion has come about organically as as the the demand grew. Then you grew the company to accommodate that demand. Again, to serve the clients, we needed more lawyers, and to serve the clients and the lawyers, we needed more support staff. So it's now fairly big office. We have a full floor on one of the towers in downtown Vancouver, but the philosophy wasn't to grow. The philosophy was just to work on the quality of the work, on the understanding that do a good job and they will come, and that turned out to be the case. I'm going to find out about Scott here in a second, but I I have to ask. You went to UBC and took a commerce degree and then turned around and went to law school. What, what, what was it about getting the commerce degree that suddenly wasn't the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? In fact, there was this whole other thing beckoning. Well, at that time, and I expect it's still the case, uh, UBC offers a commerce, commerce and law combination. Ah, okay. So I took one year of arts, and then I took three years of commerce. So I was one year short of my commerce degree. But then going to law school, I got the commerce degree at the end of my second year of law. So I saved a year in commerce, although I would have liked to have gone on and taken that fourth year because there was fabulous courses. Mm-hmm. 
But I, in the end, I had a commerce degree and I had a law degree, and the rest is history. Well, Scott Stanley, you uh, joined Murphy Batista uh, along the way, as Joe outlined the the growth of the company, which expanded to to serve the growing needs of of a larger client list. How long have you been with Murphy Batista? Seven years. Mm-hmm. Seven years. But you worked, um, after law school, you worked for corporations, uh, that, uh, or for law firms that defend insurance companies, correct? Well, I did it a little differently than Joe. He's a Catholic from Alberta. I'm an Anglican from Saskatchewan. <laughs> 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 Love those prairie rivalries. <laughs> and uh, I, Joe, Joe was fortunate enough to start doing personal injury work right away, and I was not. I articled at a firm, and this was back in the early 90s where you you had to do what you had to do to get a job because mm-hmm. they were pretty scarce at the time. So I started working at a good firm that did uh, insurance defense work mostly. And so I started working for insurance companies. And um, and then I moved to another firm that did it uh, the same sort of work. And it wasn't until I came to work with Joe that I started to do it full time. Okay. And I mean, it's, you know, I think we've talked about this before in other shows. It's just not, it just wasn't for me. And I, I really struggled doing it for the 13 years that I did do it. Mm-hmm. And yet, uh, it was remunerative and got you uh, into the law profession and up and running. And then in a position sometime down the road to take your own decisions uh, for yourself with no strings attached. Well, when I went to law school, I, I, I didn't go to law school to harm people. Mm-hmm. I went to law school because I thought I wanted to help people. And, you know, you get, you get trapped. You have to mortgage to pay, kids to put through school, and you just get stuck doing what you're doing. Uh, Scott, you told me this story. You shared it with me before we started this morning, and I want you to share it with our listeners. It's a fascinating story. And, Joe, you've heard it dozens of times, no doubt. But, a few times. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, just uh, indulge us one more pass, will you? Because, Scott, tell us about the checks and the trophies. You well, know, This goes back to your days working for a, a law firm that defended insurance companies. Yeah, I worked for two firms that defended insurance companies, and... It, it's work that never really sat well with me because I, I, as I said, Sterling, I went to law school not to harm people. I went to to law school to help people. And I just ended up, it was uh, just by chance, I ended up at a firm that defended these claims and I was good at it. And in order to sort of justify or give some meaning to what I was doing, I would, what happens if a person sues an insurance company and they're unsuccessful, they have to write them a check for the cost they have to pay. Okay. And so what I would do is I would actually keep copies of those checks um, confidential. I would just keep copies of these checks and they were trophies to me. And what it, it would be like a war veteran taking something off the battlefield. Mm-hmm. And it's just sort of dark and quite frankly dirty. Uh, but that's what I did to justify what I was doing to give it some meaning. I would keep these trophies. And when I moved to Joe's firm, I burned them. I burned all those checks. I wanted to have nothing to do with them. Now, when I, the, the other thing I'll mention is when I did work for insurance companies, I never lost a trial. I did quite well. And I received one thank you letter. One thank you letter in 13 years. Wow. Okay. Now, in the seven years that I've been with Joe, I have a pile of thank you letters that my clients have sent me. And now I collect those. And, uh, you know, I, I shared with you my funeral plans. That when I'm dead, I want to make sure I'm good and dead. I want to make sure I'm burnt. I don't want to be put in a hole because I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> and I, I want to be burned with those letters because they're part of me now. That's very interesting. Yeah. It's a talk about a complete turnaround in terms of attitude, right? Yeah. And I mean, no, no doubt the checks were, would have amounted to a significant amount of cash, but the gratitude from individuals that you have helped on a personal and company basis far outweighs whatever the dollar numbers those checks added up to. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Interesting stuff. So, Joe, that's what it's about, isn't it? It's providing a service to clients and making sure people who have been treated badly get their lives squared away. Well, I I think it's even more than that. The clients that we act for are often left badly disabled, Mm -hmm. Um, some of them in situations where there doesn't appear to be a, a, a strong prospect of them being able to get the money they need so that they can live and take care of themselves. So these are people desperately in need and in a real crisis, not only a crisis involving them, but the whole family. Sure, sure. So these are, these are bad, bad uh, situations where people's lives in one moment suddenly changed forever. Mm-hmm. And uh, the ability to assist in the process of, of helping someone 
put their shattered life back together again must be a, an extremely satisfying uh, uh, vocation. Very much so, very much so. And, and, you know, what we can do is limited, but what we can do oftentimes is we help our clients facilitate access to rehab. We help set up care uh, teams for our clients, and we uh, hire people who will coordinate the care teams. And on the legal side, where we can do a lot, we uh, we prosecute the claims, and when necessary, we go to trial. And that going to trial when necessary is key to us being able to do a good job for our clients. Well, I think, and that's that's a, a good point to, to uh, first of all, remind our listeners uh, that this is you and the law here on AM650. And our guest today, Joel Murphy and Scott Stanley from Murphy Batista LLP in Vancouver. Uh, and, and it's all about trials and court. And Scott, you, I wanted to ask you, though, you, you said when you, when you went to law school, because you, you didn't want to harm people. And yet you came out of law school and went for a went to work for a corporation a, a, a law firms that defended insurance corporations, leaving kind of me to read between the lines that in some days some of those people were out to harm people. Well, I don't think an insurance company is out to harm people, but they're not out to help them. And I had my epiphany when I was uh, at a little Christmas craft show with my kids, and uh, actually I just had one daughter at the time, and. This lady came and tapped me on the back, and she said, do you know who I am? And I, I turned, and I looked her in the eyes, and I said, I, Betty, I know exactly who you are. And she says, you ruined my life. And it was a lady who had to write me one of these checks. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, that's when I had my epiphany. I realized, no, I'm, I'm in the wrong space for me. Mm-hmm. I need to find something new. I don't want that to be my legacy. And thankfully, my daughter was too young to, right. to recognize uh, what was being said or what was being exchanged. Interesting stuff. So, but it's the going to court, Joe. This, it's the willingness of Murphy Batista when you take on a case and throw the, the weight of the firm and your own personal energies into it, then it's, it's the willingness to, if necessary, we'll take this right to court and just have it out right there. Not all law firms are that willing to go to court, are they? There are some firms who never go to court. Right. And there are some firms who rarely go to court. And the impact going to court has, Sterling, is, is not only on the case that you take to court, but it's on all the other cases you settle because the insurance company, knowing that you're ready, willing, and able to go to court, will put a far fairer settlement on the table than they would otherwise. And it just makes sense. If, if an insurance company knows this lawyer never goes to court, why would they put a whole bunch of money on the table to settle right. knowing that it will be accepted? They just have to say, this is the final offer, take it or leave it, and it gets accepted. So the, the end result is on all those cases that were settled, those people aren't getting the fair amount or right, the right, right amount. Scott, if someone is looking, if someone is in a situation where there has been some personal injury or some uh, 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 where a person feels that they they have a case, they they have a legal case, and they have a problem, and they need to get it resolved, and they're shopping around for a firm that they want to aggressively handle their case on their behalf, is there a a, a resource, a website, and anything that can help the consumer fresh off the street with no connection to the legal profession whatsoever determine, uh, I need a firm that's going to really go to bat for me here, and if necessary, go to court for me. You know, are there places where you can go and find out which firms do and do not go to court? Well, I think there are. I mean, the first thing, Sterling, is a lawyer can't say, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna be aggressive. I, that's just not something a lawyer can ethically do. Okay. So uh, no lawyer should be saying that. But it, you, you can't blame the client for wanting someone to go aggressively to bat yeah. on their behalf. Yeah, they, the clients often want that, sure. and, or they want forceful representation. Mm-hmm. They can go to uh, the provincial court website, and they can search their lawyer's name, and it's www.courts.gov.bc.ca. Okay. And they can put in the name of their lawyer, and they can see whether or not they've gone to trial, and they can see what their successes are. I mean, that that's the the ultimate source. The other thing is if you are looking at hiring a lawyer, they usually will have their successful cases up on their website. I mean, it's easy for a lawyer to put up the cases they've settled, but you you know, you know if they've settled a case for half a million dollars, it might have been worth a million dollars. So that's not really a good reference point. But most law firms will have indexed on their websites the cases they've conducted and taken to trial successfully. Mm-hmm. I mean, Joe being the rare exception, he doesn't have any of his cases up because they'd be too long. <laughs> 
but <laughs> you have to open yeah. up a separate website for Joe's yeah, cases. I'm, I'm working on him to get him to do that, mm. but um, but you you have to be you have to know that your client that the lawyer has gone to trial. It's like going for surgery, Sterling. Mm-hmm. I think it's a fair question to ask the surgeon: Have you done this before? Right, right. And have you killed anybody? <laughs> And, and we're, we're kind of being facetious, but when it's yeah. our turn to, to go under the knife, we're awfully uh, questioning of suddenly of that individual's capabilities, aren't we? Well, yeah, that's true. A lot of clients think just because they see a picture of a lawyer in the yellow pages standing next to the courthouse in their gowns, they assume they actually go to trial or are willing to go to trial. And that's, that's often not the case, mm. um, especially if they've never gone to trial. I think it's a fair question to, for the client to ask the prospective lawyer, have you gone to trial? Are you prepared to take my case to trial? That's a fair question, right? And right. you're not asking for aggressive behavior or anything. Right. You just want the facts. Are you the type of lawyers that, A, go to court in the first place, and B, if you uh, 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 side with me on the merits of my case, would be willing to take this to court on my behalf? That's right. Do people just ask you that, Joe, straight up in, in, in these initial no, meetings they, sometimes? No, they don't know enough to ask that that sort of key question. Okay. And and the question, if I was the client shopping for a lawyer, I'd say to the lawyer, give me the names of some of your cases so I can look them up and read them. Oh, okay. Um, and that's part of what you can do on this website, Scott, that you yeah, just told yeah, us. Yeah, if you, if you go to the website and plug in the lawyer's name, it will spit out the link to each of his or her cases. Interesting stuff. So you can see not only when they went to court, what they went to court about, but how successful they were. The other thing clients should do with respective lawyers is they should go to that. Uh, they should go to the BC Law Society website. Okay. And they can put in the name of their lawyer and see if there's been any complaints made against the lawyer. Oh, kind of like the Better Business Bureau yep. for lawyers. Yep. Interesting stuff. Our uh, subject today on you and the law is uh, insurance claims, and we're going to talk about settlements or whether you, whether automatically because you have a claim, you think you have a claim, should be ready to fight. When what what's a good claim to settle on? What's a good one to stake out your claim and go to battle on? Our guest Joe Murphy and Scott Stanley from Murphy Batista LLP in Vancouver on this edition of You and the Law on AM six fifty. This is You and the Law. There's more of the show still ahead on AM 650.